Hey guys, so I just wanted to show you a quick haul video that I have got the past, uh, I don't know, in the past few days, I guess. A couple of different shops I've visited. Um, this one, Medusa Chain. This is DC's graphic novel number three. And this is the Medusa Chain by Ernie Colon. And I saw this in Scott, Constant Brown Stars video, and it looked super appealing to me. They had a few in the graphic novel series, but I only picked up this one. A couple of bucks, I think I paid for four bucks or something like that, but very, very cool. The artwork in it is pretty crazy. The storyline is a bit uh, insane as well. But uh, I love some of the colors in these older ones. Um, not quite sure the story behind the DC graphic novel series, but it definitely seems like kind of creator and kind of heavy metal-ish, sci-fi-ish for this one specifically. Um, we'll see. Maybe I'll try picking up a couple of the other ones and see how they go. Just getting ready to do a video on Rebecca Dart as part of my focus on Canadian cartoonists. So Rebecca Dart and her husband Robin Bougie, who you saw in my, who I talked br briefly about in my um, coming soon video the other day. Um, this was kind of lying on the rack at this comic shop that I went to today, coming home from work, that I don't normally visit, but literally lying out on top of the rack as if uh, just waiting for me to come along. So that was pretty fantastic because this was one actually that I thought I wouldn't find that I'd have to try to email her and see if she had a copy that she could sell me so I found that and then another one from the exact same place today uh, Blood Orange number four I believe yeah put out by Fanagraphics and this one also has a Rebecca Dart short story I believe there was two issues of this Blood Orange that had a short story from her so again it was kind of, this one was took a little bit of hunting. I was looking through the racks and it was kind of buried, but uh, super excited to find that one. So that was very cool. An artist that I have dug for a long time, ever since I read this, Batman Legends of the Dark Knight, is Seth Fisher. Um, he does the art in this five-part series from issue number 192 to 196, I believe. And this was something that I've had in my collection for a while that his name has always been in my phone where I keep all my lists. Um, I looked him up and kind of got titles of everything else that he's done art for. And I've always kind of kept my eyes open for them, but I've never had any luck until recently. So I'll show you, show you quickly these Legends of the Dark Knight. There's 193. Uh, there's 194. 195. And then 196. Um, if you know it, it's just a great story, and I mean, his art always really amazed me. Um, he's done quite a few things. So after I f after I finished reading this earlier on, I had found one. I had found one of the things he did, which was um, Green Lantern Will World. It's a 100-page spectacular one-shot, and it says from July 2011. I believe he passed away. I don't know. It might have been late. 2011 or it might have been 2012 anyway it's it's not not that long ago um, and he was pretty young I believe when he passed as well um, but I just again I, I I don't know if it's kind of an all reddish type of style animation or cartooning that I just really dig some of that super because it's very very cartoony but it's also still um, kind of out there especially in this will world you get a chance to see this otherworldly creations of his as far as like buildings and aliens and kind of just sort of strange imagery. Um, this one it's kind of like Green Lantern is really drifting through this very very strange world. Anyway, so I had those for a long time and uh, then just the other day this was another one that was laying on top of a box of comics laying right there face up as if ready for me to come along. So this is Flash Time Flies. Um, John Rosam is the writer. Seth Fisher is the artist. And then Chris, uh, I think that says Chukri, C-H-U-C-K-R-Y, who I notice did, um, I think did the colors for a bunch of Seth Fisher stuff, including this. Fantastic Four and Iron Man, Big in Japan, Yet a different comic shop used bookstore that I went to, and he had this buried. 
Uh, so that was a very, very cool score, because I've been really interested in this one for a long time, because this one really seems like something I can read with my son. So there's the wraparound cover, and there you get a real good sense of uh, the type of creatures and aliens we're dealing with. So basically, Fantastic Four and Iron Man are in Japan, and they just fight giant monsters. But whatever. That's, that's all you need to know. What else do you need to know? Nothing. Uh, Zeb Wells is the writer on this one. I uh, haven't read them yet, obviously, just kind of had a quick look through them, and am super, super excited about it. Uh, so yeah, I know my boy's going to eat these up. So there's number three of four. I may as well just show you all the wraparounds here. And then number four of four. There you go. Let that sucker focus. So that's it. So it's it's very cool to get my Seth Fisher going. And then one of the other things that he did was he did uh, a couple of short stories in two different heavy metal issues. One from 2000, September 2000, I believe. And then this one from January 2001 and it's called Lift. Um, this one he wrote, Andrew. It's a short, wordless comic strip. Um, it's very, very cool to see because his art, uh, you know, quite a bit different. The color palette, completely different. I believe he did everything involved with it. Uh, so I'm very curious to get that other heavy metal issue. And I think that was it. I think it was just those two pages. Yeah, it was. So, I mean, you know, I paid a couple of bucks for this one. I think I paid seven fifty. It says five ninety five there, but it, I paid a little more than that. Um, but whatever. To add to the Seth Fisher collection, I don't mind throwing out a couple other bucks, uh, a couple extra bucks. Um, it'll also be interesting. I haven't really read too much of the newer kind of heavy metal. So, and this one looks like it's got a couple of kind of cool stories in it, so we'll see what happens. <clears throat> if you watched my video the other day, um, Profit, I did a focus on. I'm just going to zoom out here just a little bit. Uh, if it'll let me do it, which it's not. So we'll just back up a bit. There we go. So this is issue number 32 and 33 of Profit, which I think now brings me up to speed. Because um, I believe this is the newest Thor God of Thunder number 5. Super excited to read this one. I cannot wait to see how this all ends. Um, Indestructible Hulk for me and the boy. Number 2. I know it's up to like number 4 or 5, but I'm just kind of taking it one at a time with this one. Because um, I'm not sure if we're going to like it or not, but we'll see how this one goes. And then speaking of giant monsters, James Stokoe's Godzilla The Half Century War. This is issue number 4. Uh, I believe if you go back, I've, I've talked about this and uh, mentioned Stoko a couple of times as far as he's done this and Orc Stain and Wonton Soup and stuff, so... Heard about this in a video, Lord knows when, The Secret History of D.B. Cooper. I think it was quite a while ago. They had a few issues of this from Oni Press, so I just tried out. I'm going to try out the first two. Um, and this is I picked up from today, today after work as well. And then also today after work I picked up this, The Return of the Magic Whistle by Sam Henderson. This is number 12. Um, I'm familiar with a bit of his work. I've, I've read some before. Uh, comic strippy and uh, not sure if it's completely offensive, but I don't think it's uh, kind of run of the mill. Um, so there you go. That's the mini haul. Thank you very much for watching, and uh, we'll see you soon.